using the first shift formula, find the Laplace transform of the function f of t equal to e to the 3t cosine 4t. Now, Laplace transform, that's going to take a function f of t, it's going to return another function with its variable in s. Then we define it as improper integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. Since we're integrating with respect to t, the s is going to be treated as a constant, and then we'll have to worry about whether our integral is defined or not. Now, the first shift formula, what does that say? That says if I want to take the Laplace transform of a function f of t times e to the at, the rule is just take your original Laplace transform of f of t. Instead of evaluating at s, you evaluate at s minus a. Okay, why is this true? Well, let's just write our definition, follow our nose. So the idea is going to be we're going to have e to the at, e to the minus st, we can combine the exponents. That'll give us e to the at minus st, or e to the minus parentheses s minus a t. So now, if you note, let's take a look at the definition of Laplace transform. So the idea is not to focus on the s, just pretend that there's a box here. So the Laplace transform evaluated at box is just, okay, take your integral, f of t, e to the minus box t, dt. So when we do our work down here, you'll note the thing that's going to be called box is just going to be s minus a, and then we're just left with Laplace transform of f. So what's coming out is Laplace transform of f of t, evaluated at box, and here box is s minus a. So that's our first shift formula. Okay, just bookkeeping. Now, let's apply it to our special case. Now, what do we need here? Well, first thing we note, okay, we have e to the 3t. So here, our a is going to be equal to 3. When we use our formula, we're going to need to know how to do the Laplace transform of cosine of 4t. So we did that in another video. So the rule there is going to be Laplace transform of cosine of bt. So be equal to s over s squared plus b squared. Now, if we're going to do our shift, what's going to happen? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take our s, replace it with s minus 3. So what are we going to get? So the Laplace transform of cosine of 4t is s over s squared plus 4 squared. And then do our shift wherever we have an s, we're going to put an s minus 3. So our Laplace transform is s minus 3 over s minus 3 squared plus 4 squared. And if you're being nitpicky, the domain is going to be s greater than 3. All right. Nope. Nothing special about the 4 or the 3 here. For the general formula, Laplace transform of e to the at cosine of bt, evaluated s, just going to be s minus a over s minus a squared plus b squared. Then domain s greater than a. All right, while we're here, let's do it for e to the at sine of bt. So Laplace transform of sine of bt was just b over s squared plus b squared. So now I just put in an s minus a wherever I had s. So Laplace transform of e to the at sine of bt is going to be b over s minus a squared plus b squared, and then domain s greater than a. Now. We want to verify our answer by finding the initial value problem that goes with f of t. So, how do we do that? Well, one thing we know about solutions of this form for differential equations, okay, they're going to come from a characteristic polynomial that has the roots where the 3 is going to go with the real part, the 4 is going to go with the imaginary part, and then we take plus or minus of the imaginary part. So the roots are going to be 3 plus or minus 4i. So our characteristic polynomial is just going to be t minus root 1 times t minus root 2. All right, the quick way to multiply this out is to move the imaginary stuff away from the real stuff. So we regroup the parentheses. And then you'll note this is just a difference of two squares. So that's going to give me t minus 3 squared plus 16, or t squared minus 6t plus 25. Then, this is our characteristic polynomial, so I could translate that back to an ODE. So I have y double prime minus 6y prime 
plus 25 y equals 0. Only thing we need now are the initial conditions. So note if we evaluate at 0, okay, cosine goes to 1, e to the 3t is going to go to 1, so we get a 1 out. Then we're going to need the first derivative, okay, this is an order 2, ODE. So we take its derivative, evaluate at 0, and we have y prime of 0 is equal to 3. Now, what's in the boxes? That's going to be our initial value problem. So, let's apply our derivative formula for the Laplace transform to our ODE and see what comes out. Now, derivative formula, we worked this out in another video. So that just says if you take the Laplace transform of a derivative, it's going to be equal to s times, okay, take away the derivative, get your function y, and then subtract off y of 0. So, if we apply that to the second derivative, okay, that's the derivative of the first derivative. So that's just going to give me s times Laplace transform of the first derivative minus the first derivative at 0. And then I could just sub out this term here. So we get this formula for the Laplace transform of the second derivative. Now, we have Laplace transform for second derivative and first derivative. So what I want to do is apply the Laplace transform to both sides of this ODE. So if two things are equal, take the Laplace transform, they stay equal. So we'll have Laplace transform of our derivatives, okay, have this formula here. And then on the other side, we're taking the Laplace transform of zero, which is always zero. We use the linear property to break up the sums, and then we can use it again to pull out the numbers. So if I substitute in our formulas from up here, what we'll be left with Okay, it's going to be this big mess here. If I collect all the terms that have just the Laplace transform of y, take all the other stuff, push it to the other side, okay, we get to here, and then you know, okay, we can divide by this, but also know that we can rewrite this as s minus 3 squared plus 4 squared. So if you note, this is going to verify what we got using our other method.